All right, this is an example of how the Feedback Loop app can be used during psychoeducation. And so I might be working with a case that has social anxiety and they're using a lot of avoidance to cope and they're feeling depressed. And so I might walk through this um, to illustrate how I view these things interacting with one another. Maybe with an example, they get an invitation to a party, their social anxiety is activated and it makes them want to avoid the party. And so uh, part of why they avoid the party is that it's actually going to make their anxiety go down or get better. And so it makes sense that they would want to avoid it. But the more anxious they get, the more things they're having to avoid. So their avoidance is getting worse. And in fact, they might be avoiding so many things that they start to avoid things they used to enjoy. They're not doing things that make them feel good or give them pleasure. And so it makes sense that all that avoidance is going to start to make them feel depressed. And as they get more and more depressed, they might actually start to avoid things even when they're not anxious. And so the depression is making their avoidance worse. And you put this all together and, and you get into this really vicious loop where the anxiety is making their depression worse, the depression is making their anxiety worse. And what really becomes salient is that this benefit that they get from avoiding something that might make them anxious has a huge cost, right? All these red arrows. And so you might pause here and see how much they agreed with this. Maybe this feels like an exaggeration to them. You can modify a few of these. Um, and so you might save this here and assuming that they start to see how these things are interacting, then it becomes clear that the avoidance has to be targeted. And so, well, what's the opposite of avoidance? Approach. So what would this actually look like? Well, right now they're stuck in this loop where their depression is making their anxiety worse and their anxiety is making their depression worse. And so what if we try to break out of this by approaching things? Now, initially, approaching things is going to actually make their social anxiety get worse. Right? But that's where we will come up with exposure exercises to get them ready and be there to help them begin to engage in these activities. And the premise is that much of that anxiety is anticipatory and that when they start engaging in these activities, they'll get evidence um, that some of their um, threat perceptions were exaggerated and that most of their anxiety was anticipatory. And so as they practice approaching things that make them feel anxious, it's going to become easier to approach more things that make them feel anxious. And eventually those things are going to stop making them feel anxious and so it's actually going to become easier to approach things even when they feel a little bit of anticipatory anxiety. And as they approach things and they're doing social activities or doing things that they like and enjoy and they're not feeling that much anxiety, that's also going to make them feel less depressed. And the less depressed they feel, the easier it's going to be to engage in more and more activities. And so, eventually, this feedback loop will break, but it all begins with having to approach things that right now seem really scary, right? So if we go back to the starting point, um, initially, 
when they approach things, it's going to really activate their social anxiety. So we've kind of flipped the equation here. If we approach things, this is going to temporarily get worse, but the benefit is that this is going to all get better, and eventually this vicious feedback loop between anxiety and depression will be broken.